Hey, what's up, guys? It's Franco here, and I'm back with a special video today. Um, it has finally happened, and if you're reading the title, you know what this is about. This is not clickbait or anything. You see that little red one in the corner of my screen there? That can only mean one thing. And before I explain what that is, I have been getting countless comments on all these videos. Almost every single video I get, someone's like, why are you in silver? Why are you in bronze? What's a Town Hall 15 doing in silver? Town Hall 15 that low trophies. This is explaining it. So what I've been doing over the past couple months is I've been just dropping trophies. And when I drop, well, now I've been starting to gain up in trophies because now I just finished it. But when I drop trophies, what I would do is I'd go down to 650 trophies. And then once you're down at 650 trophies, I would just let people attack me. And that's why I have this base of double ring, because if you look at the defenses, um, the Archer Queen can't shoot over. So you got to break through the walls, and it deters a lot of farmers. And what this does is it makes people usually drop a troop or something, like a hero, and then give me a defensive win. And why would I ever want just a defensive win? So you can see the Queen walks around. And then this guy just decides to give up after taking a couple buildings. And defensive win is if they don't get any stars, any town hall, and like not 50% or anything. Um, and that happens quite often when you do that strategy. And then I'll drop back down. So I hope that clears up why I was low in trophies for, honestly, it's been about, what is it, April right now? Um, about four months. Um, because I finally finished the hardest achievement in Clash of Clans, and I do not think that is an understatement at all. This is definitely the hardest thing that anybody can do in the game, and honestly, a lot of people think it's not even possible. So other hard achievements might be like the donating spells, donating siege machines. Um, other ones are like the new defenses, the monoliths, the spell towers. Some people struggle with the campaign maps. Um, I don't really know what else there is but none even clan capital some people just hate builder base in general but none come close to this achievement which is the hardest achievement in game 5,000 defensive wins successfully defend against 5,000 attacks and we finally did it um i've just spent so long doing this achievement that i actually don't even remember how to play clash of clans normally um and i know when i covered this in other videos so many people were like oh my god this seems so fun like i want to do this myself and i'm always like you're so naive like this takes so it took about four months to finally get five thousand attacks um and let's let's just finally claim here a thousand xp a hundred gems that is such a steal this should be worth ten thousand gems for how difficult it is but let's finally claim it here and there we go 5008 defensive wins is what i have and even if we look at some of these top players best players in the world um nobody has this achievement done so he's at 1700 you can be on here for a good while and not see anybody with this with this achievement done sometimes you do find the rare person with it done but it is definitely 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 you would understand if you played Clash of Clans, because when I was in Legend League, you probably get one defensive win every two months, and the only way that people get to a couple thousand or something is literally just by if they're inactive. So I got a lot of my defensive wins when I was inactive for, I think, about six years. Um, but yeah, normal people do not have this achievement anywhere close. We'll go to the top guy in my clan, and he has about 818. The next guy below that, th these are normal people, not the pro people at the top level, 600. And I roughly average around, where even is this, 51 some dude has. Yeah, I roughly average around, you can check how many defenses you get per month. I roughly average around a little bit under 1,000. Last time I explained what I was doing, I got 1,000 wins in one of the seasons. And how seasons work is it just resets every month. So this one ends in eight days, and I ended up getting 661. I only needed to get 654 to get the achievement, um, and I passed it because I have been traveling and everything uh, to a new country or whatever, and I haven't had time to make this video, but I finally made it, and I thought I would explain a little bit on how I do it. So in my attack log, what I would do is I would just drop my queen, and it will go into a live attack here just so I can show. I drop my queen, and you might see this base and think, oh, this is such an easy base to three-star probably. And that's what I've been doing because I ended this achievement. But what I would do is I drop my archer queen just like this, shoot the giant arrow across, end the battle. All you want is the dark elixir. And the reason you don't want any of these other loot 
types gold and elixir is because when you have higher loot, the odds that someone attacks you for your loot actually goes up. So right here, one day, 14 hours ago, I probably was at like 8 million of each of these. And when people see that, they actually attack you for your loot. And then you get a defensive loss and a shield. And you're offline when you're just waiting for all these defenses to come in. And then you don't realize it because you can't constantly check or else people aren't going to be attacking you. You have to be offline for five minutes for someone to attack you. And people will say put on notifications and whatever, but hey man, it's just a game. I'm not trying to spend my life in front of my screen waiting to see if someone attacked me. I know some people, I think I've seen one person get 5,000 defensive wins in a single season, which is actually so insane. But you can see how it's possible after I have all this experiment, experience doing it. But yeah, the only reason I shoot the Dark Elixir is because a lot of people seem to not raid you for Dark Elixir. If you have low gold and low elixir, I know this is probably relatable to a lot of people, you don't immediately check the Dark Elixir there. So I'll do a real attack here, but I'll, I'll keep talking about my strategy. Because um, now that I'm done with this whole getting 5,000 defensive wins, I'm actually not even sure what I'm going to do. I think I might just trophy push back up to Legends League like I was before. Um, and I had to change my attack strategy. So now I'm using E-Drags again. I was just like, I don't know what to use. So I figured I'll just use those for the time being. Um, because before I was just using just my queen. There was no attacking, basically. And I would just use my war attacks like the Super Archer Blimp. Um, because I would only really have to, have to attack during war. Um... So yeah, now I'm off with a new attack strategy and everything. But like I was saying about the Dark Elixir, is people usually don't raid you if they see 8,000 Dark Elixir and 20,000 gold. They're not going to raid you. They're going to be like, oh, especially farmers down low. I know it seems very counterintuitive because people are like, oh, Dark Elixir, like that's all I attack for. But instinctively, for some reason, you barely even look at Elixir too. So sometimes when I would have about 8,000 gold, um, people wouldn't really attack me. And, or sorry, when I would like have 8 million gold, people would attack me every time and say I had zero elixir. 8 million gold, zero elixir. But then when I would have, um, when I would have 8 million elixir and zero gold, nobody would attack me. It's something about funny, like about these numbers is people just look to the gold instinctively. So my recommendation is if you're doing this strategy, do not try to farm gold at all. I've had success farming elixir. And I got to max elixir many times. Um, but it's really going to hinder how many defensive wins you get. And obviously, you're, I'm, I still was able to upgrade walls very slowly and upgrade defenses at Town Hall 15. Everything's so fucking expensive. Um, but yeah, you can still progress in the game without... Wow, I'm actually not going to three-star in space. You can still progress in the game while doing the strategy, but obviously it is, a, it is slower and it is going to be a little bit more difficult. But you can progress on the Dark Elixir because that is... I think people almost look at that less than regular elixir for some weird reason because it is more valuable and everything um so i have been prioritizing the pet house and a hero upgrade at all times which for me is kind of a win i'm kind of happy that i was able to at, at least get something out of this because if i wasn't able to get the dark elixir out of this oh uh, this guy's not gonna get this, guy, this guy's not getting a defense on me i'm dropping that <laughs> flame flinger i don't care um but if I wasn't able to get anything out of this, this would just be a waste of four months. But honestly, my progress has not been hindered. So I actually consider this a total win. And I'm still debating if I would just want to go and farm. That's why I'm using E-Drags a little bit. Not really quite... I don't, I'm not a fan of Sneaky Goblins. I think it's just kind of boring. Um, but that's why I'm not really sure what I'm doing yet. And I want to farm... Maybe I want to farm down low a little bit. And maybe grind out these walls and stuff. Because I really don't remember like what the point of this game is now that I finally... It's funny when you chase a huge goal like this. Like something that seems... It's so impossible that it almost seems unachievable. And then when you finally achieve it... I don't even remember where it was. Unbreakable? I can't even find it anymore. Uh, yeah, there it is. When you finally achieve it, then you don't really even know what to do anymore. So... Hopefully I figure out something else to do, and obviously my clan has taken a big tank because of this, and as a leader, everybody looks to the leader to see, oh, like, how good are they or whatever. When when you see the leader at the very bottom of the clan, that's just, like, such a big red flag for, like, almost any clan. But now I can finally push back up the Legends, and hopefully our clan gets some new success, because there were times where our clan was so down bad. We had no, like, very little members. We were down to, like, 30 people, and good people just started leaving, loyal people, and I was like, man, it's literally just because... I've been dropping these trophies. So if you do try to do this, there is a lot of stuff that I would watch out for. And honestly, if I wasn't making YouTube videos, I probably wouldn't do this because it is so ridiculous. Um, but my goal is hopefully to be one of the few that completes every achievement in the game. So the last of these just are going to get done with time. Um, I'll just have to boost super troops and then raid monolith spell towers 
and finish up clan games, two more months worth, and always just be on my donations. That's all I really do anyway. Um, but yeah, I, I think this is, I, I'm so happy that I finally finished this achievement. And I think I'll end the video here. I just thought I would give an explanation on how I actually do this. Um, and I'm pretty sure I covered all the points on how you should do this. Oh, one last thing I didn't actually cover. So what do you get when you finally finish this? You get 1000 XP and 100 gems. And that's it. It is not worth it at all. I don't recommend anybody do this, to be honest. It's, it's just fun. It's just like one of the rarest things to see in the game. And I don't know why I actually fully committed to doing this. I'm a little bit crazy, I guess. But uh, yeah, I think that's it for the video. Thank you guys for watching, and I will see you in the next one. Peace.